Welcome back to the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, where Team USA is all set to meet Team Czechoslovakia. Tonight's game to be refereed by Bill McCreary, Ray Scapinello, and Mark Vines working the lines here tonight, all of them National Hockey League officials, and all from Canada. Let's check out the goaltending matchup, Ed. I take both of these goaltenders, uh, Mike Richter in goal for Team USA, Dominic Hasek. There's Richter now. He's playing in his third game. He's given up nine goals his first two games. Of course, he'd like to have a little more help from his teammates in front of him. And Dominic Hasek, 26 years old, the property of the Chicago Blackhawks. He played five games for the Chicago Blackhawks this past season. Proving to Mike Keenan and all the Blackhawk fans that he's more than just an international league goaltender. McCreary steps in to drop the puck. And the Czechs with Reichel at center ice win the draw. That's Musil up into the center ice zone. Yonder is on the right side of this line with Kostak on the left. For the Czechs, that's Eric Weidrich back at the United States goal. Teamed up with Brian Leach up front of forward line. And as Rolnick centering again for Evan Miller and Mike Madano. A long shot handled by Richter, almost mishandled, and then played around the boards and held in by Czechoslovakia. Emil Kostak over on the left side, mishandled it, and Madano brings the U.S. team across the line. And Rolnick is checked, and the puck cleared out. Here's a chance, but Jagger failed to pick it up. Up right back in by Chelios, who's just come out on a player change, joined by Gary Suter for the USA. Big hit along the boards there. Suter feeds Chelios as Madonna cuts through center ice. The pass to Rodick was knocked away by Schlager. The young Vancouver defenseman is yet to play at the National Hockey League. Ian Musil will get a rest now as Chelios plays one up the left wing boards for Ed Olchuk. On to Joel Otto's stick. One man back. Otto chased to the right side, and then his shot is deflected and goes out of play. For a minute and nine seconds into the opening period, this is the Labatt Canada Cup. Faceoff coming in the check zone off to the left of goaltender Dominic Hoshin. United States Jake's trying to establish a hitting game early. They looked a little jittery from the first faceoff. They were back in their own end making some mistakes. Here's the matchup that you referred to at center ice too. And Joel Otto for the U.S. facing off against Michael Pavanka of Team Czechoslovakia. Pavanka from the Washington Capitals. Five years with the Caps. Battle for the puck, won by Pavanka, and handled here by Kuchera. Frank Kuchera, Chicago Blackhawk defense, but Otto steps into the defense for Gudas, that freed up the puck, but the checks right back on it. They turn it over in the center ice zone. Jimmy Johnson playing on the left side of the defense with Kevin Hatcher on the right for Team USA. Richard Zemblinska back of his own goal. 90 choice at the end of the Oilers. There's Johnson with a long shot here to side. Kuchera trying to go back with that goal is checked on the play. Team USA with Otto in the slot and get it out there, but it's knocked away. Otto battling for it with Samlichka. Samlichka feeds it up ahead. Here's Pavanka cutting through center ice. USA gets three men back, and the checks go offside at the blue line. Some mistakes by the Czechs now. The United States Jigs, we talked about just before the game started, the fact that they're going to have to poke check, or at least I should say four check a great deal. You saw Michael Pavanka smooth skating. He's a good center iceman from the Washington Capitals, and Otto will have the assignment of trying to keep him from gearing up that line with Samlika and Jelinek. Jelinek on the right side. They're the veterans and the players that will do the most damage offensively for the Czech team. U.S. coach Tim Taylor has made a, an adjustment on his forward line. He's got Miller playing on the left side with Janney and Brett Hull. And this is Brett Hull with a pass to Miller. Across the line. Can't get it onto the stick of Hull. And back come the Czechoslovakians. This is Rosinski over the line on the right side. He's hauled down. Play allowed to continue. The U.S. up with the puck. The pass off the boards to Janney. And it's knocked away. And dumped in across the line. Brent Hull after it. Hull. As Spalik with him, Richard Spalik, the draft pick of the Buffalo Sabres, unable to move it up the boards. Janney centers one in front. Hull was well covered on the play. And back comes Joseph Bernack. Bernack across the line, cuts to the right side, tries a backhander. And Palfi open in front of the net, elected to shoot it instead. Now they work it toward the blue line. Lucille plays it around the boards. This is Brian Leach.
Leagues and the New York Rangers. Up the boards, but not out. New Seal held it in. Couldn't get it to Seeger in time for him to do anything with it. And those Seeger played last season with the New Jersey Devils out on the left side of this line. Now Palfi's going to get a rest. And his other line mate, Nerdak, heads off the ice as well. There is no score. The game just nicely underway as we watch Brett Hull come through center ice. Nick handling across the line, then ridden into the boards by Schlager. And Czechoslovakia breaks out two on two. Now three on two as they hit the U.S. line. The pass to the left side. Big shot off the left arm. A goaltender, Mike Richter. That was Ludmir Kolnick off left wing with the drive. Back comes the American squad. Long shot handled by Pasek as Brown cut in. Doug Brown up with Christian and LaFontaine. At LaFontaine, centers the drive, turned aside. The rebound, LaFontaine scores! LaFontaine returns to the action. His first game, his first shift, and how about that? Yes, thank you very much. He can put it in behind the best of goaltenders. This one comes the easy way. LaFontaine goes to the front of the net, takes a rebound, shovels it into the open side. Hasek, as we had explained, is a goaltender that loves to be down and spread out on the ice. He was down, didn't spread out far enough, and LaFontaine has made it one to nothing just four minutes into the hockey game. In the opening game of the Canada Cup tournament, we've got an interference penalty coming here. We'll get back to that thought in a moment. The penalty will be against the U.S. The Czechs go to the power play. This is the little bat, Canada Cup. is on Team USA. Tony Granato gets the game. It'll be just prior to the penalty against Granato and Rolf Witter Ritterwald in the Swedish net went down constantly. He was on the deck most of the afternoon in game one of this tournament and the U.S. squad feasted off that type of goaltending. You saw where goaltender Hasek was and you pointed out down in the deck. He likes to go down early. That can play right into the hands of Team USA. Well, particularly when you have a lot of rebounds around the net. If you're going to be a scrambled tag goaltender, you better have defensemen that understand it and forwards that'll come back and help out. The Czechoslovakians have not scored a power play goal on 10 opportunities in the tournament this year. And you saw Reichel with that long shot testing Richter. No problem there. The Czechs 0 for 10 and five chances against the Soviets, five more against the Finns, while the U.S. squad has killed off seven of the 11 penalties called against them thus far. Interesting to point too that uh, Ivan Holinka now, he's the new coach of this Czechoslovakia team. You can just see this hair in behind. He's got a beautiful set of gray hair. You can just see him in behind Coach Walter there. But uh, he was inserted into the coaching position. I guess the national coach, Stanislav Navesli, they were falling into disfavor. They thought that the Czech team was getting very dull over the last few years. They wanted to have a more spirited team. Yeah, sixth place finish at the World Championships will bring about a coaching change, won't it? <laughs> yes. Yager played one around the boards, the far side. That's Seeger setting it up at the blue line. And Lucille's shot bounces around in front. Cleared at the Team USA defense. And Joey Mullen hangs it off the boards and out of arm's way. Quickly, the checks in the transition. Trying to catch the United States in a player change. And Yager got his bell rung. And immediately... Reichel comes to his aid, going after Suter. The puck cleared by Team USA. 52 seconds remaining in Granado's interference penalty. Checks trying to set up on the power play. I'd like to dump it in here. Chasing it is Thomas Jelinek. Jelinek put it back in the net for Pavanka. Backhand pass and then shot wide as Gutierrez came in off the left point. This is Thomas Jelinek again, played it to the corner, got it right back. Look toward the blue line. He elected not to give it to the point man. The play develops back of the net. This is where a lot of the European teams like to set up. Anna Wayne Gretzky of the Los Angeles Kings. Make the play from back of the goal. 
Of course, in European hockey, there's so much ice to work with back in the goal line that it's almost like a rink in itself there. It's one of the areas you can take advantage of the extra man, too, because you can't send, as a penalty-killing unit, you can't send any more than two players over in one corner at one time. Michael Pavaka's pass broken up at the line, but the checks recover, and the teams are at sixes side again. And they try to set something up. Pavaka centers it, steered wide, and just by an inch or two. Pavaka again trying to put it out. Was met by Gary Suter. Suter, the Calgary Flames, takes the man, and his defense mate, Chelios, has covered the puck. Kolonik with a great scoring opportunity. He fanned on the pass. Pavanka from behind the net makes a perfect pass to him. They had Richter beat. There's the pass. There's the shot. He shoveled at it. He misfired on it. Best scoring chance for Team Czechoslovakia. There's Michael Pavanka double teamed and hammered. Doug Brown with a couple of pretty good hits. One of them, I believe, that was he that hit Jaeger. The up-to-date standings in the 1991 Canada Cup. Canada and Finland, even with three points each. Czechs, Canada, or USA, excuse me, and Sweden with two each. As have the Soviet Union now. Their big win today. Some upsets in the opening day. And here the USA leads one to nothing. Hatcher with a long shot. Loved and held by Dominic Hasek. Hasek gets a bit of a nice shower. <laughs> so puck. Later on in the game, he'll welcome all of that snow raining in on him when he gets a little warm. But here, Hatcher with a hard shot. He can blister it. Watched him with the Washington Capitals. Evan Hatcher, 24 years old. 24 goals he scored last year with that kind of a shot. He led the Washington Capitals in scoring. Brian Leach led the New York Rangers in scoring, so there is some power on defense. Team USA. Leach is on the left side here now with Weinrich over on the right up front. And the old Chuck works with Janney and Hull. And Janney of the Boston Bruins, Brett Hull of the St. Louis Blues. Here's Janney. The high slot. His shot just drifted wide. A low shot. We've got a penalty call coming against Team Czechoslovakia. A hole detected by referee Bill McCreary right in front of the net. U.S. leads one to nothing. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Czechoslovakia taking the penalty. The defenseman, Bacha. Jargos Bacha called for a holding at the 644 mark. I believe it was Eddie Olchuk who moved into the front of the net. There you see the arm around the, the neck. Number 12, Eddie O from the Chicago area. In USA's power play is connected on three chances, three of the 13, I should say. Well, the Czechs have killed off all 10 penalties called against them in the two previous games. The U.S. sets up in the center iso. Madonna dropped it back in. Here's Brent Hull turning at the line. Hull, Ronick, and Madonna dragged to the skates of Ronick as he gets over the line. Around his seal, chips to the backhand, can't score in the rebound, and then it was flipped over the net by Mike Madonna. Madonna of the Minnesota Stars had a great chance. In Czechoslovakia clearing the puck now. What a fine move by Jeremy Roenick. Something we saw last Saturday afternoon against Team Sweden when he opened the scoring and then the rebound missed. Couldn't get around Lucille on that play. And Team Czechoslovakia is cleared it towards center right. Up with it is Brian Leach. Nice play across the line. Hull moves to the net. The pass to Roenick. He shoots. He scores! Hasek beat him the first time he got in on the power play, not the second. Let's take a look as Brian Leach, number two, grabs the puck. Beautiful pass back. Actually, it wasn't that good a pass, but it was a beautiful recovery. Off the skates, put it ahead. Jeremy Roenick makes it two to nothing, a power play goal. Brian Leach, there's his pass. Look at the presence of Roenick. He reached back. That's hard to do with his left skate, pulled it ahead onto his stick, and then let it go. It was a partially screened shot on Dominic Hasek. That'll be Roenick's third goal in the Canada Cup of 1991. Team USA, two. Czechoslovakia, no score. He played just over eight minutes of the opening period now at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. 
Ibaka made it to the right side. Zedlak put it in the U.S. zone, and it's recovered here. They come. Jimmy Johnson fed it back to the right side. Christian trying to put it in front for Brown. Play broken up. He checks Ibaka moves through center ice. That long pass goes offside at the U.S. blue line. Brett Hall with the other assist on the goal. Saw Leach break through. That's where Leach is such an asset. A good defenseman, but he's also excellent offensively. He reads plays well, and he trapped. He trapped the Czech team, trying to break out shorthanded. Brett Hall, and at the end of the first period, we're going to talk to Pat LaFontaine and Frank Musil. There's LaFontaine of the U.S. team, Musil. Czechoslovakian team. Tim Tanner, the interim head coach of Team USA. The report on Bob Johnson, still listed as critical, but in stable condition. He was in a wheelchair most of today, we're told. Went for uh, therapy and also for speech therapy. Is still writing down instructions and communicating with the staff of the Pittsburgh Penguins and Team USA in that fashion. And there is reason to believe that uh, if this rate of recovery continues, that very shortly he'll be able to return to his home in Colorado Springs and recuperate there. I only hope that that all falls into place for him. He's probably watching this hockey game if there's any opportunity. So if he is, hi, Bob, from Jigs and I, and all pulling for you to get well soon. Team USA coaching staff, that's Mike Eves, along with Jim Taylor, and referee Bill McCreary had been over talking with Ivan Halinka at the Czechoslovakia bench. Halinka played two seasons in the National Hockey League with the Vancouver Canucks. Likeable guy, big guy, quite a hockey player. Here's Weinrich, teamed up with Hatcher again on the U.S. defense. Weinrich turned it over, and that long shot from Bacha, glove, and held by Mike Richter. Kind of a thing you just cannot do, make that mistake. Looked as though it was an unforced error, just handing it away. Weinrich has not had a lot of ice time in the hockey game so far. Probably his first shift. There's the pass intercepted. There's a rising shot. Richter, well out on the top of the crease, is able to handle it easily. On the battle here, Joe Lotto won the face off and Eric Weinrich tries a cross ice pass in and out of the skates of Joey Mullen and controlled by Czechoslovakia. They turn it over. Zolchak feeds it up ahead. Otto racing it after it. He's taken to the boards. The puck comes loose for Palfe. Siggy, Sigmund Palfe, a draft choice of the New York Islanders in the draft of 1991. Just 19 years of age. Palfe on the right side. His line mate. Erdek taken off the puck and controlled now by Kevin Hatcher. Hatcher out of Gross Point, Michigan. Shoots from the blue line just wide on a deflection. And after it is Joey Mullen. The wall chuck trying to come out in front. Got knocked off balance. Centering pass is picked off in the goal crease and brought back by Team Czechoslovakia. They move up three on two. Palfi to his teammate Bacha. And Bacha ends up shooting it wide of the net. Wolchuk takes the man. Handling the puck only momentarily was Mike Madonna. He's got it again off right wing. Madonna centers to Rodick and it's broken up. Team USA 2, Team Czechoslovakia, no score, reaching the midway point of the opening period. This is Gary Suter out of the University of Wisconsin, playing now for the Calgary Flames in the National Hockey League. Team USA unable to get the play organized inside the Czechoslovakian zone. Czechs dumped it down the ice. It's something that the European teams are doing more and more in. Starting to play the Europe. North American style. You're right, Jiggs. Funny when you think that the Edmonton Oilers went to their Stanley Cups and won it. We got a delayed penalty here against Team USA. They won it by trying to copy a little of the European style, and now they're pulling more towards North American. In Czechoslovakia going to the power play. Penalty of the hockey game. That's Granado number 21 there with the stick into the feet. Was the Czech player giving it a little extra as he dove off his skates? It's Granado in the penalty box and another opportunity on the power play. For Team Czechoslovakia, they only had one shot on goal, their first power play. And goaltender Dominic Hasek is at the Czechoslovakia players bench and equipment being adjusted. Got the officials over there huddled around with him except for linesman Mark Lines. 
Well, as I had mentioned, he played five games for the Black Hawks. He had a 2.46 goals against average. He was the three time Czech player of the year, 87, 89, and 90. And wouldn't you know, this is his third Canada Cup appearance. Not yeah. just this, this year, I mean, third time that he has participated in the Bat Canada Cup play. Yes, he started in 84, then again in 87. Pile up after that faceoff deep in the U.S. zone. On the power play, Yager is on the right side, Reichel in the middle. And Seeger is on left wing. Seal is on the right point, and on the left side is Gary Schlinger for Team Czechoslovakia. Joel Otto take the face off here. Otto is able to pull it to his defenseman, Greg Wolanin, and down the ice it goes. And immediately, Team USA changes up. Otto was out there only to win the face off. Now Doug Brown has come out with Kevin Miller as the penalty killers. Reichel goes to the left side, off the boards, and out of the reach of his teammate, Singer, and down the ice it goes. One of the things that the Czech team boasts is their puck handling and skating ability, and so far in this hockey game, their puck handling ability has been next to none as they go offside again on the power play. Yager didn't get outside the blue line quickly enough. Now they're going to make a complete change. Yarber Yager. 19 years of age with a Stanley Cup ring to his credit when they present him in Pittsburgh early this coming NHL season. His rookie year, what a year he had. 27 goals, 30 assists, 57 points, and he played in all 80 games. And playing with his boyhood idol, and he's still a boy, Mario Lemieux. Yeah, I said to somebody tonight, he's such a good kid. He said, underline, kid. <laughs> he is just that, a kid. Yeah. You know, you look, I don't think he shaves yet. He's no. got the greatest complexion for a, for a man, a young man. I mean, it's just the rosy cheeks and a, just a great complexion. If only he would smile a little more. <laughs> He's always smiling. Never stop smiling, exactly. Back in the puck here is Lino Gudis. A minute and two seconds remaining in the penalty to Granato. Team USA leading by a score of two to nothing as we watch some fancy stick work by Jelinek. Across the line with a pass to Pavanka. Around the boards. Zemlichka over on the far side. Unable to get it back to Michael Pavanka. Gary Suter for the U.S. Banks went off the boards. Didn't get it outside the line. Dudas. It's checked, however. Good play by Doug Brown. Moving up as well as Christian. Who's puck in the center ice zone. Jelinek comes back for it. Number 25, Thomas Jelinek. He had a couple of goals in the game against the Soviet Union last Saturday out in Saskatoon. And Lichka got knocked down. The puck right out in front. Nice pass. It's kicked into the goal mouth and ends up back of the net. Ivanka waits. The puck does not get to him, and it's cleared out by Team USA. Best scoring opportunity on the power play for the Czechs. That particular chance as the penalty time runs down three seconds, two seconds, and Granato is on his way out of the box. Team Czechoslovakia did not get a shot on goal with a man advantage, and here's the U.S. team moving in. Ronick, hip chip it by Dominic Hasek. Nice play by Ronick. Hasek steals it and holds it. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the opening period. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Equipment Seems he's been over to the bench twice now. Here's Jeremy Roenick. Watch the stick here now. Roenick trying to reach back for the puck. Hit Hasek across the back of the head. Hasek, as we had explained here again, he's down. He's very long in the legs and arms, so that could be one of the reasons his style is dictated with those long legs and arms. He can spread out a long way. Reminding one another that they'll see each other in training camp with the Chicago Blackhawks after the Labatt Canada Cup has decided a winner. Here's Mike Pagano, nice move, and Granato is denied. Buck loose again, and recovered by Joseph Bernack, who's cleared it to center ice. Aladdin trying to find Madonna. Madonna checked closely. Bernack all over him, and now Aladdin covers back of his own net. off road skates with that centering pass. Jigs, I'm sure that the capable coaches of Team USA have to recognize the fact that so far, Team Czechoslovakia have not hit anybody in this game, and in front of their own net, they don't take anybody out. They're still playing the puck. Exactly. Long cross-ice pass. Palfe here on the right side. Dropped it off. And 
That's turned aside off the stick of Rosinski. Comes right out in front. This is a young line. Baranek, Palfi, and Rosinski for Team Czechoslovakia. The oldest player in the line is 20. Ryan Leach back for Team USA. Giving it to Brent Hull and back. Leach checking his options. Selected to go up the middle, but Hull couldn't hold the pass. Over the line with it now is Edno Seeger. Seeger drops it back toward the blue line. Schlager held it in, sets up his teammate. Seal shot drifted wide on the deflection, and the puck loose back to Team USA's goal. Ryan Leach with it here. Leach off balance as he turned to get away from Cron. Robert Cron of the Vancouver Canucks, number 22 for Team Czechoslovakia. That's an icing call against the American side. Interesting to watch also the Czechoslovakian team. They send the centerman and the right winger always in to do the forechecking. The left winger is always somewhere around the front of the net, and his assignment then is to check, back check, and help out the defenseman. And back in his own end of the ice, his assignment is to go deep where our centerman in North American hockey would be back in. I think they lose out a lot. For instance, if a left winger is in a good position to forecheck, if he can be the first one in, he should go, but they don't do it that way. Quite an awkward looking style, but somewhere they must feel it's effective. Well, it's yet to prove itself in this game. Team USA leading two to nothing. Goals by Pat LaFontaine and Jeremy Roenick. All check out with Otto and Joey Mullen for the US side. Here's Suter. Long shot from the point. Deflected the rebound. A shot off the goal post. A washout sign given by Bill McCreary. And up come the Czechoslovakia inside. Leo Gudis can't get around. Suter rides him into the boards heavily. Yager is there looking for the puck. Yager can't get it to Kostak in time. And it'll come outside the USO. In Czechoslovakia trying to set up, and as Yager moved over the line, he had a man ahead of him, and that puts the play offside with just over five minutes to play in the opening period. This is the Levant Canada Cup. Gudis being taken out by Suter. Watch Suter ride him up into the glass. Wham! Hard hit. Then he wrestles him to the ice. He's not finished yet. Somewhat of a mugging going on. Gudis is saying, wait a minute. Wham! Take a little of that. Gudis was drafted by the Calgary Flames in the 1990 entry draft. He's one of several Czechoslovakian players that play outside the country, not in the NHL. He's playing in Finland. Yes, he scored 10 goals and 19, had 19 assists last year playing in the Finnish League. International Ice Hockey Federation claims that there are a vast number of players, Czechoslovakian players, 231 Czechs and Slovaks who play outside the country, playing in Canada, the U.S., Sweden, Finland, Switzerland, Italy, Austria, and Germany. 231 Czech and Slovak players outside the country, and there will be more. There's another look, a close-up look at Jaeger, number 15, as the camera pulls away. Matt LaFontaine won the faceoff outside the Czech zone. Puck dumped in by Kevin Hatcher, recovered now by Richard Jemlik. Jemlik trying to move it up the boards. It was stolen by Miller. Miller, LaFontaine, and Christian. LaFontaine waiting back in the net. Kevin Miller couldn't get the puck to him. Miller, the only Detroit Red Wing in the lineup for Team USA. Puck played down the ice. Richter moving it around the boards. Pitching in was the defenseman, Shemlik, and it's knocked away, and they score! Jelinek off the right face-off point. A broken play in Team USA's end of the ice. You could hear it all over the arena. It went bang, bang, off the post and off the bar in the back of the net. Here's grabbing the puck, Jelinek. Look at the shot. Off the goal post to the right of Richter. Here's the broken play. You could see Hatcher. He was heading up the ice. There's the shot, a beautiful shot by Jelinek, and it's now quickly two to one. Big change in this hockey game. Team USA had had it their own way. They made one mistake. Score is cut in half. Jelinek, 29 years of age, never drafted by an NHL team. Scores here at 15-37 of the opening period. Red Hull, big slap shot off the wing, high and wide, bounces off the back of the goaltender's helmet. And Team Czechoslovakia able to clear it out. Hasek must figure there's another Team USA player in behind the net shooting at him. Duck. Hasek battles one around the boards. Got it to the left wing side. And Martin Ruzinski has cleared it down the ice. 
McLean will line it back. Eats it to the left side. Doug Brown tipped it up ahead for Janney, who was all alone waiting at the blue line. It was a nice heads-up play, but it materialized. Now three and a half minutes remaining in the opening period. Over the line they come. Aranek trying to center one in front. Alfe worked it out, and the U.S. squad breaks down the left side. Brent Hall coming right in on goal. Shoots Hoshik to save. Rodek the rebound, and he can't get it in front of that vacated goal. Dave Czechoslovakia starts out of the zone, led by the defenseman Schlager. Schlager moved it to Ron. Ron and Seeger out there. This is a line that Coach Tim Taylor expressed some concern about this morning. Supposedly, this is the fourth line. For Team Czechoslovakia, two of them with NHL experience, Seeger and Kron. And the other member of the line is Kolnick, the 23-year-old, who was also drafted by the New Jersey Devils. Saw Richter make the save routinely. U.S. cleared it to center ice. Nothing doing there. The Czechs across the line. Seeger's pass, a bad one is tipped. Loose again and recovered by Jeremy Roenick. Roenick and LaFontaine have the goals for the U.S. as the puck is tipped out across the line. And the Czechs will set up in their own zone. You get the feeling now, Jake, that the Czechs seem to be taking over this hockey game for the last two shifts. They've been down in Mike Richter's end of the ice. Yeah, for this been an 8 o'clock start, they would have been devastating the way they're playing right now. Team USA jumped on the early for a 2 to nothing lead before Jelinek scored unassisted. U.S. There's it through center. This will be called for icing. The automatic call once it crosses that goal line. Just under two minutes to play in the opening period. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Playing the body, covering a lot of ice. They stopped playing the body. They started to stick check, and that allowed the Czechoslovakian team now to pull into their end of the ice and get some chances. Robert Reichel just beat his NHL teammate Joel Otto on that faceoff. There's a hit. There's a penalty as well, a holding call. Just what the United States doesn't need right now with Team Czechoslovakia putting on some heat, starting to take some penalties. You see the signal. It's a holding penalty. Jim Johnson drawing a holding penalty. Some speed by Czechoslovakia. U.S. trying to hold it back. There's Johnson reaching out, grabbing. Czech player pulling him down. All of a sudden, it could be a brand new hockey game. The Czech power play which has not scored a power play goal so far in the two plus games they play. This will be their third opportunity of the period. U.S. won the draw. Suter has slapped it around the boards and down the ice. Watch it. Property of the Hartford Whalers back of the net. Jurgis Bacha left side. Melek couldn't pick it up. Neither can Otto. Melek was hit by Otto, and now Yager has it here. Yager fed it to the right side. Kostak over the line, into the middle for Yager, and his shot is blocked at the defense, going off Chelios. Another drive out of the corner, turned aside. Not close. Bacha held it in. The U.S. can't get out of the zone. Yarmer Yager with a pass, but into the skates of his teammate, and handled here by Joey Mullen, and down the ice it goes. A minute five seconds remaining in the opening period. One of the areas that the Team USA is strong in, Jigs. We talked about that last Saturday against Sweden as their penalty killing unit. You can put players like Brown out there and Joel Otto, Christian, Mullen. And on defense, you got Leach, Chelios. Christian up front right now, along with Dougie Brown. This is Ryan Leach. 33 seconds remaining in the period. The Czechs trying to come out of the zone. Don't get out cleanly. Now they recover the puck. And across the line with it here is Jelinek. And that long cross-ice pass missed everybody. And the puck is skied high down the ice with 15 seconds left in the period. Neil Gunas almost turned it over in his own end of the ice. The Czechs get to the U.S. line. Jelinek headed toward the corner. Lichka got bumped, and there's the horn to end the opening period with the U.S. holding on to a 2-1 to one lead. Well, as you said, the complexion of this game changed dramatically after the U.S. had that 2 to nothing lead. And 
didn't play the same way over the last seven, eight minutes of the period. You could tell by the reaction of some of the U.S. players. Now they're in retaliation. They were initiating in the early part of the period. Here in the end of the period, they're reacting to what the team from Czechoslovakia was doing, and that's not a good sign for Team USA. And I'm sure the coaches pick up on that, and they'll talk about that after the players get back into the dressing room. Yeah, some work to be done for this U.S. tie. And I would think Team Czechoslovakia would have to feel that uh, things were starting to go their way. They still have a little time to work on a power play when the second period begins. But after one period, it is Team USA 2, Team Czechoslovakia 1. This is the 1991 Labatt Canada Cup. That coverage of the Canada Cup continues 2-1 to one here. The USA leading Team Czechoslovakia. And uh, at this time, we've got Pat LaFontaine standing by. And uh, Pat uh, missed the first couple of games for your Team USA and uh, must feel good to get back and be a part of it all again. Well, it sure does, Eddie. Uh, my timing wasn't too good on the uh, hip flexor injury, but uh, it's one of those muscle injuries you have to uh, let it heal, and uh, fortunately it feels a lot better, and uh, it's good to be in the lineup. It's nice to have a lead 2-1. to one. Now, listen, you have to level with me. I mean, after all of the practicing that you've been doing for a month and getting ready for your return here, uh, listen, it wasn't exactly a hard-fought puck that you put in the net. Well, uh, sometimes you get those easy ones. You, you work hard, and, and sometimes the harder ones uh, uh, don't come. But uh, it was a matter of uh, uh, five, five guys out there working and, and uh, driving to the net. And uh, just happened to be in the right spot for a rebound and had an empty net. Uh, it was nice to, to contribute out there. Give us your impressions of the first period, Pat. Well, I, I thought that uh, we had some, some real good chances. Um, uh, I thought uh, about three quarters through the period, we started to get off our system a little bit. and. Uh, um, I think we took some penalties that, that didn't help us. Uh, we'd like to stay out of the box and get it back into our rhythm and, and get four lines flowing and get some, uh, uh, like I say, a, a good rhythm in, in, in our system like we did in the very first about eight minutes or so. Pat, I know that you've had enough experience in this television business having worked with you over the past few years. Uh, would you take a look down at your monitor? I think they're going to show us the goal that you scored and maybe you could give us some of the insights of what you were doing and how it sure. all unfolded. Well, it, this is after the play. Uh, uh, Greg Brown just happened to throw the puck. He was going to throw it towards the net. And I had earlier just got out and passed it to Dave Christian, who put a shot on the net. Um, here it is right here. Dave Christian puts a shot on the net. And the rebound goes to the left. And I just came out from behind the net. And Doug Brown put a, a shot, a pass uh, right over to me. And there was an empty net. So uh, all the guys were driving to the net. And just happened that the, the puck came free at a good spot. As a player of a long time ago, I used to hate having to check guys like you because you always knew where to go and when to do it. You're always there at the right time. You can't check that kind of a thing. Now, let me get to another point of your career. Obviously, everybody in, uh, uh, that follows hockey knows uh, that uh, you have a problem with the New York Islanders. Uh, could you bring us up to date as just about where you are? Because at one point, you had asked to be traded, and, and so far, you have not been and the team has not been sold. So could you reflect on that for us, please? Well, Eddie, um, basically in January, I requested to be traded, and um, it was a long process, and uh, basically the way things had been handled, I was a little disappointed at the, uh, the way the situation had gone on for a period of time. And, uh, uh, but I, I tried to put that behind me, and, and uh, I tried to do what I thought was best, and I, of course I requested a trade. It wasn't an easy thing, but uh, now we're uh, to a point where uh, uh, from what I understand, the team could be sold. The team went up for sale a couple weeks later. And uh, I'm like a lot of the other players. Uh, we're waiting to see what happens uh, on Long Island, uh, hoping for the best. Uh, I'm keeping an open mind uh, towards the sale of the team. But right now, my feelings really haven't changed a lot since January. Pat, I remember something that you did say in, in reference to this particular incident, and that it wasn't money. Money was not the question about you asking to be traded. Well, like I said earlier, Eddie, uh, it was really no monetary issue. Uh, um, it, it came down to principle on my decision. Uh, it came down to communication and honesty, and uh, it just dragged on for a period of time and some things that, were ha that happened. Uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, it's a part of the business. Uh, you realize you have to deal with that side, and you do your best to separate the two, and you never want to lose the love of the game. But uh, I think you have to stand up for what you believe is right. And uh, like I said, I hope it works out for everybody. Pat, for, uh, for me on the selfish side, we'll only hope that you're playing back in New York uh, with the Islanders and uh, continued success here with the, uh, with the Canada Cup and your Team USA. Oh, thanks, Eddie. The uh, Team USA leading 2-1 to one over Team Czechoslovakia here at the end of the first period at the Joe Louis Arena. You've been watching the Canada Cup, Labatt's Canada Cup. So uh, we have to take advantage of it. We've got 40 minutes to win a hockey game.
Let me ask you about uh, some of the things. Is it true, the way I see it, that your left winger seems to be the one that doesn't do any forechecking? He seems to be putting himself in a position to either score a goal or always be in a position to back check. Yeah, I think that's that's the problem. We're getting uh, too much room uh, to good skaters like Madano and Ronick, and they had all kinds of time to carry the puck uh, from uh, their zone, and uh, they were hitting our blue line 100 miles per hour. And uh, as you know, probably it's really hard uh, for the defenders to stop them from uh, going around us. So we have to change uh, the tactics a little bit. Frank Busiel, uh, thank you for the quick interview. I know we're running into a time problem here. Success for you and your teammates and here in the Canada Cup. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, Frank. You're watching the Canada Cup, the Lobat Canada Cup, and it's 2-1, to one, the United States over Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia, 2-1, to one, and Team USA got it cranked up early. I'm Jinx McDonald with Ed Westfall. Good start for the Team USA squad, and then they seem to back off a little bit. They did, Jags, and uh, they are responsible for their own actions in the sense that it, it didn't seem that there was anything that happened that made... Team USA back off, but as you had mentioned, he's got a girl, good early jump, and as Pat LaFontaine had described with Doug Brown and Dave Christian helping out, there's Brown as he turns. LaFontaine moved in, grabbed the puck, fired it in. Hasek down, trying to spread out, but he couldn't do it. Here's another angle of the same goal, watching LaFontaine come out from behind the net and just jam it in. That was the one to nothing lead. First goal for LaFontaine. First shift for LaFontaine. He missed the first two games. And they take a two to nothing lead on a goal that came from an area the coaches were concerned about. Specialty teams. The power play finally works. They get only the one chance in the first period. But Jeremy Roenick finds Pater. Yes, he does. And uh, Roenick has been dangerous just prior to getting the goal. He had another opportunity. And here's some beautiful puck handling by Brian Leach, the New York Rangers. There's the pass back. Taking it off his left skate, bringing it up to the stick was Ronick and Jeremy Ronick, who had two goals against Team Sweden, gets a power play goal here, a beauty, as he pulled the puck up, and then he fired it. You could see Hasek did not have a whole lot to look at with a lot of bodies moving across in front of him. By the eight-minute mark of the opening period, two, Team USA led by a score of two to nothing. About five or six minutes later, the flow started to change, and it all favored Czechoslovakia over the balance of the period. Well, as I had pointed out, Jigs, they started to tick, stick check, excuse me, Team USA, and the result was this grab, a stolen puck, a loose puck by Jelinek, and he rung it off the goalpost to the right of Mike Richter. We'll get another look at that. You can see the confusion here. There's Kevin Hatcher moving out, and he turns around. He realized all of a sudden some of the players scatter around trying to cover up. Richter reaches back, looks back. It was in the net, two to one. Unassisted goal. Team USA outshoots Jacksonville by a margin of 10 to 8 and lead two to one. This is the 1991 Labatt Canada Cup. We get ready for the second period of this action at the Joe Louis Arena. 26 Dom years old, Dominic Hasek. He's been busy in the first period, limbering up and down at the other end, Mike Richter. As Richter tried to get the rest of his equipment in front of the only goal that went in. The goal post was there, but it went off it and got behind him. And still 10 seconds remaining and a penalty to Jimmy Johnson of the U.S. Third Czechoslovakian power play of the game. Jeremy Ronick moves in to take the face off. Number 21 just going out of your picture is Tony Granato. Out of Downers Grove, Illinois, Chicago suburb. Now a member of the Los Angeles Kings after having been traded by the New York Rangers. Johnson steps out of the penalty box. Checks come through center ice. Bavanka is over the U.S. line. Shoots it around Leach, but high and wide of the net. Bouncing off the glass and controlled by Eric Weidrich of the New Jersey Devils. Weidrich up the middle. Nice pass to Ronick. Left side for Granato. Slips it in front. There's Ronick. Can't bang it by Hasek. Madonna from back of the net. And the blue line, but between is defense combination of Leach and Weinrich. Moving in quickly is Jelinek. Knock the puck loose. Weinrich works it off the boards. Up to Ronick. One touch to toward Tony Granato. Three checks get back. That's Madonna to Ronick. Ronick around Slager. Loose puck in the near corner. Madonna moves in, but not in time. And out come the checks. Through center ice. Brzezinski with a pass to the right side. And then it's dumped in. Off the stick of Jem Zemlichka. Richard Zemlichka. Talented forward. Now Madonna comes to center ice, surrounded by white shirt and Czechoslovakians, and they knock the puck loose. Brzezinski, the Yager that slips away from him, only to be cleared by Chelios. 
Mayfield to get him back in the USO. But Donald, neat pass. Here's Olchuk. Can't handle the puck. Bouncing on him. Now he gets his stick on it to score! Eddie Olchuk, who thought he had tied Team Canada late in the hockey game. The goal did not count. Feeds Joel Otto. Otto was standing directly in front of Hasek. Unprotected. Here's the second effort of Eddie Olchuk. There's the pass. Popping it into the net. Joel Otto and Team USA regain a two-goal lead as Eddie Olchuk finds Joel Otto all alone. Was Otto in the crease? Of course not. Yeah, just to finish the play, Otto's first goal in the Labatt Canada Cup 1991. A minute and 25 seconds into the second period. Kevin Hatcher, long outlet. Joey Mullen couldn't handle the pass at the center ice on. Here's Seeger. Seeger played it behind Robert Reichel, who bumps his own teammate. But bouncing in the air, knocked down. Reichel, the Seeger, he's taken to the boards by Hatcher. Here's Weinrich. Well, Lannan, excuse me. And get it to Hatcher. Now Joel Otto plays it up ahead. Olchuk is out of the zone as Mullen coming with him. Gives it to Joe Mullen. Back to Olchuk. Off the left side. And his shot is deflected high off Zemlich's stick. Team USA in the middle of the player change as Mullen ripped one just wide of Hasek's net. Puck comes bouncing back to the blue line. Leach played it in along the boards. Smelik failed to clear it out. Now they get it outside the zone. And up ahead on the play. It's Babanka on shot off the blocking glove. Babanka tries to center again. Nothing doing there. The Americans with a three to one lead over the checks is Joey Mullen. A neat pass to Johnson. He's through center ice and dumps it wide. Of Hashek. Hashek around to the left side. Jenny gets checked on the play and Johnson will cover it up at center ice. Jimmy Johnson lays it down into the check zone. Seal waits behind the net. Is stolen and Brett Hull fired one wide. Now it's centered out in front again. Pad save by Hasek. Good save off Hull. Leo Goodis turns it over back in the net. Oh, the Americans came within a whisker as that one went off the post. Miller had the chance. Meantime, Jelinek is across the line. His shot is off the left arm. He moved it to a teammate and then up off the left shoulder. Goaltender Mike Richter. Here's Brett Hull across the line. Centers one. Jimmy Johnson gets bumped off the puck. Quickly, the checks come up two on one. Over the line with it is Kuchera. Kuchera centers one, and the shot got through the goaltender, Richter, but out the other side. Cruising back into Zemlichka. He's got it on the backhand. Can't pull the trigger. And out comes Team USA. Brent Hull drops it back. And he brings it across the line. Slows up. It's a Hull who missed the shot. Doesn't miss those too often, Jake, but that's a very difficult shot to make while in motion and being checked. Now uh, here's Yager cutting it off left wing. Shoots off the outside of the goal, and the puck is lodged there and held for a faceoff. Sure, 16 minutes there. remaining in the second period. This like is the Levant Canada Cup. Opening up here early in the second period, Pavonka with a fine scoring chance. Jager also had one after that. Now the youngsters out there for the checks. Jelly also moved up to talk to linesman Ray Scapanello. Jelly also talks to Doug Brown, and now they're set. Baranek moves in to take the face off. Joseph Baranek. Into the Oiler, third round pick in 1989, just 20 years of age. He's big, Jigs. He's six foot three. He's over 200 pounds, so he has size as well. Mark Krasinski. In and out of the faceoff circle. He's going to go to the right side with Yager. The puck comes back to the point. Lucille fired one wide. Schlager gets checked and it's loose at center ice. Back goes Lucille. Lucille plays it off the boards. The check's up the middle intended for Yager, who couldn't control the pass. Richter has played it around intended for Christian. The checks hold it in. Here's Yager with quick shot blocked by Chelios. Yager has it again. Tries to set something up. Turns on Chelios. Look at the strength, the reach of Yager. Chasing Doug Brown back in the net. Brown has given it to Chelios. Off the boards, but not out. Checks again. Gets this attack mounted. Krasinski to Yager. Centers one. That's deflected. Broken up and cleared by Suter. Up the left side. Christian across the line with LaFontaine. Christian centers. Brown on the backhand. Couldn't complete the play. 
Three Americans back at that goal line as the puck comes out only to be covered by Hasek. Again, pressure by Team Czechoslovakia. Jager, what a job. Boy, I'll tell you, having a teacher such as Mario Lemieux to follow onto the ice night after night is paying dividends in a lot of ways, and one of them is his ability to ward off checkers in the offensive zone. Chelios, trying to check the youngster, was having an awful time. He's using his strength, he's using his long reach, and his balance on skates. Now here's Hatcher off the right point. In shot deflected. It was a pad save by Hasek. U.S. leads 3-1. to one. Played five minutes of the second period. This game coming to you from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. 3-0 Canada, we're told, and taken a very quick lead. Near the end of the first period now, but a big 3 to nothing lead in that game. As you heard earlier, a Soviet Union won today. Big victory over Finland. There's a shot off the post, then blocked by Richter, and he covers the puck. So the Soviets beat Finland. Canada has a 3 to nothing lead over Sweden. And here it's Team USA 3, Czechoslovakia 1. Another scoring opportunity. You could hear it ring off the goalpost. Robert Reichel. Calgary's fourth pick in 89. Blasted a hard shot that hit the goalpost to the right of Mike Richter. There's the shot of beauty. There's the puck coming back off the goalpost. A break for the U.S. There was a backhand play off of that puck coming off the back. Polnick taking the rebound from behind Richter. Richter was able to beat him. Face off to the left of the U.S. net. Nine Czechoslovakian players in uniform tonight. National Hockey League experience. I think there's only three on their entire 25-man roster that they brought over here who have never been drafted by NHL teams. When you think of the Czech team and you think of some of the players that did not play, didn't go to camp, didn't want to play for whatever reason, we'll get a chance somewhere. We'll give you a list of some of the players that did not show up. Ivanka has slipped it to the right side. Kalanick centered one. Richter out to handle it. Now Joey Mullen up the boards. Didn't get it to a teammate. Check the fine pressure again. And Team USA, Eddie Olchuk just clears it down the ice. Back forward here is Leo Gudis. Found his defense mate. And hand moving up and gave the puck away. And Otto just drilled that wide of the empty net. USA with a two-goal lead as the Czechs come over the line. Jelinek handling the puck, slipped it around the defense and couldn't get to it as he was taken away from the play. Team USA clearing it out. The rule that could have been played. The goaltender does. Both teams in the middle of changes. It's played out of the zone by Kuchera. Big pass. It's through to the left side. Starting with it is Ruzinski. Martin Ruzinski off left wing. Dropped it back and Yager flips it wide of the net. USA trying to come out of the zone. Miller gets knocked off the puck. It's loose for Jimmy Johnson. Up the boards. Here's Jenny on the Miller stick. Kevin Miller, the Detroit Red Wing. Up to back. Cruising in off the point is Weinrich. Centers, and it's covered and held by Martin or Dominic Hasek. 13 minutes remaining in the second period. This is the Labatt, Canada Cup. The end of the ice. Greg Jenny for the U.S. to take the face off against Yosef Baranek. Mark Vines marking out some orders. U.S. wins the draw. Janney gave it to Weinrich. In around the boards. Janney was well covered. There's Miller picking the pocket of Schlager. And in and out in front. Aronek centered one right across the goal mouth off the stick of Craig Janney. And Yager gets it to the line, but no further. Yager playing on this line now with Ruzinski and Baranek replacing Palfe. Ruzinski with a shot. Hand saved by Richter. The rebound is cleared up the right side. And Janney gets it out of the zone. Onto the stick of Brett Hull. Gave it away in the center ice area. Then Janney recovers, but only for a brief moment. Yager too well covered over on right wing. And the play called. Linesman Ray Scapinello indicating a delayed offside call. There's the local boy, Kevin Miller, came over in a trade from the New York Rangers. A rather controversial trade in uh, New York at the time when Joey Koser went to the Rangers. Yeah, a lot of other players involved in that. He was at Michigan State for four years. He's from, as you mentioned, the Detroit area, so he's a 
acquisition that the local fans are all in favor of. He was the spark, really, in the game against the Swedes on that Saturday afternoon, last Saturday afternoon. His hitting really got Team USA into the hockey game. Now the Czechs trying to come out of their own end of the ice. Seeger over in the right wing, played it around LaFontaine, but Christian covers it center. The Atlantis to LaFontaine, to Dave Christian. Christian trying to cut in off right wing. The puck knocked off his stick. Christian got the stick up a little up. Basha. Fontaine drifts to the front of the net, but the puck covered now by Hoshek. Some pushing. LaFontaine taken to the corner. As you look at Dave Christian, 3 to 1. The U.S. leads. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Some of us remember his father, Bill, and his uncle, Roger. They were with the 60 and 64 U.S. Olympics. And of course, the 60 U.S. Olympic team, like the 80s, one gold medal. Davey assisted on the opening goal here tonight, scored by Pat LaFontaine. And Jeremy Roenick made it 2 to nothing before Jellick replied toward the end of the opening period. Opportunity there, stretching save by Richter. Played around the boards. It's back toward Zulichka, put it in front. The play broken up. Suter can't get it out of the zone. Ronick did. He has sent Mike Madonna across the line to Granado. Good drive. The fine save by Hasek. Granado got that away quickly. Ronick takes a hit. Granado gives one for Jen Lichka. The puck is cleared out of the Czechoslovakian end of the ice. Jelio sets up at center. The pass through Granado. Checks play it onto the stick of Jen Lichka. Lichka with Yager and Pavanka as they cross the lines. And Lichka overled Yarmer Yager. Yager checked as he tried to go back in the U.S. net, and up with it is Chris Chelios. Chelios, Chicago Blackhawk, with his teammate Jeremy Roenick. Roenick put it in front, Mullen in a little deep. Joey Mullen centers, and it's picked off at the Czech defense. Through center ice is Baranek across the line. Baranek has shot the drifted wide of the net. Yager after it over on right wing, taken to the boards heavily by Roenick. Puck controlled by Baranek. On to the side of the net where it's covered by Richter. Boy, that was a hard hit, Yager. Old Chuck then gives him a bounce. Was that Baranek or was it? No, it's Yager. 15. Look at his head first. Jeremy Ronick hammered the youngster, had his head down, had him in an awkward position, took advantage of it. Yager got up just as quickly as he went down. I was asking Yarmer this morning why he's not wearing number 68. His Pittsburgh Penguin uniform number as he's come over here with the Czech team. He just shook his head. He said, they don't like it. He said, who does it? The coaches? He said, they just don't like it. Uh-uh, can't wear 68. Well, he brought a beautiful Czechoslovakian crystal vase for equipment manager Steve Latin. I think there's some money exchanged for that deal, but I'll tell you, what a piece of work. Icing is the call against the Czechs. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Frank Janney is out to take the draw for the U.S. Robert Reichel for the Czechs, and right in front, the puck slipped off the stick of Janney as he had the goaltender down and out. Long shot. That's wide of the net. Czechs starting to come out. Here's Seeger. Cross ice pass. Goal by Kolnick over on the right side. Hatcher rubbed him into the boards. Another defenseman pitching in with Bacha. Weinrich, the U.S., clears the zone. No icing call. The goaltender out to play the puck. Past the midway point of the second period at the Joe Louis Arena. The U.S. leading 3-1. to one. Checks handling it here. Bacha over on the right side. Long pass into the skates of Robert Reichel. Calgary playing. Test Richter with another long shot. Won't beat him with that. This is Seeger trying to cut in off right wing. Puts one in the slot. The drive off the chest protector of Richter. Good shot by Reichel. Now Brent Hull can't get over center ice. Bacha, nice pass up ahead. Rzezinski, or Reichel, excuse me, has shot it in. Hatcher recovers back of the net. Kevin Hatcher to Brent Hull on right wing. Couldn't take the pass. It's going the length of the ice. Icing waved off. The U.S. in the middle of the player change. Canada has a 3 to nothing lead over Sweden. They've just completed the first period of that game at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. And here, midway through the second period, the U.S. Beats Czechoslovakia, 3-1, to one, as Pat LaFontaine brings the U.S. across the line. Nice pass, round shot, deflected wide. Christian with it here. Back to the blue line, Chelios, hard pass away from Suter. 
Checks, trying to come out around the boards. Christian pinching in, plays it to the corner. This is LaFontaine, slips away from one check. Trying to get around the second, and the puck knocked off his stick. Chelios can't get it away from Pavanka. Quickly, two on one, the check's over the line. Big drive wide of Richter as Emlichka teed it up. LaFontaine has cleared the zone. The checks with it again at center ice. That's Gutierrez backhanding it into the U.S. territory. Kind of an odd choice of plays, Jiggs. They had a two-on-one break. Jelinek was on the right side, but he quit skating. Yeah, now Doug Brown brings the U.S. across the check line. He's surrounded three of them right there, breaking up that rush. Around the boards and up the left side, Rajitsko. And he has put it on Baranek's stick. He gets checked at the blue line, and here's Granado to Ronick. Ronick chasing a loose pockets. We welcome our CTV audience across Canada. I'm Jake McDonald with Ed West Hall. We have seven and a half minutes remaining in the second period. Team USA leading Czechoslovakia by a score of three to one. The Fontaine and Ronick scored in the first period before Chalinik replied for Czechoslovakia. Joel Otto, the Calgary Flames centerman, scoring his first goal of the Labatt Canada Cup 91, coming a minute and 25 seconds into the second period. One of the advantages now for the U.S. after they regained the three to one lead, Jiggs, is the fact that they can use a little more of their bench. They were starting to squeeze down early in the hockey game. Things weren't working out too well till the goal by Joel Otto. Now you see things kind of loosen up a little bit. More players getting into the action. The Chicago Blackhawks, Jeremy Roenick on the draw here. The youngster, Baranek, won the faceoff. Shinsky played it back in the net of the checks in the white uniforms. Move it to the right side for Yager, who was well covered. Ronick, and he had Madonna open, but he elected not to give it to him. Moving it off the blue line here is Jimmy Johnson. Johnson plays it around the boards. Yager hit hard again by Ronick. They've been at one another all evening. Yager wearing number 15 for the checks. Johnson. Minnesota Stars has played it down into the check zone. That's Frank Lucille going to the right side. Pass behind Yager off Ruzinski's stick and deflected. Mike Richter who will cover it and get a face off. Here's the recap of what's been happening here at the Joe Louis Arena tonight. LaFontaine before the four minute mark with assist to Christian and Brown. Then Leach and Hull assisted on Rolnick's power play goal to make the score two to nothing. Jelinek stole a puck, scored unassisted, his second of the Labatt Canada Cup. Two to one at the end of one period. As you see, Joe Alato with an assist for Benny Olchuk early in the second period. I think back, Jakes, to the quick interview we had with Frank Musil at the end of the first period. He was talking about he hoped that the coaching staff would abandon that particular uh, style of play. They were using the left winger never to forecheck, only to stand in front of the net and to back check and help deep in his own end of the ice. Seems that they may have gotten away from that because the right wingers of the Canadian team were having a field day with Dominic Hassan. In the second period, the Czechs are out shooting the U.S. by a margin of nine to four. Here's Seeger trying to break in. The puck knocked away from him. And the Czech defense will go back. Richard Zemlik puts it back in the net. Sacha is the other defenseman, number 18. And here's Edno Seeger, New Jersey Devil forward. He's played one season in the National Hockey League. Reichel heads to the front of the net. Reichel also having played only one year, that with Calgary. Here's Joel Otto, teammate at Calgary, playing a long pass to Joey Mullen. He's across the line on left wing, sets up Olchuk. Otto drives to the net, and the pass was out of his reach. The Jacks clear the puck out of the zone. And Chelios has shot it right to goaltender Dominic Hasek, who covers it for a faceoff. Three to one, the U.S. leading. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Again, it's Craig Janney on the draw. He's out with... Miller and Hull. Boy's a little too anxious. Race Capanello puts the puck in play. The U.S. wins the draw. Chelios to Hull and hits into that boom off the pads of Hasek. And there's a dive in the center ice area that's going to be called by referee Bill McCreary. The first penalty of the second period. A hook. Jelinek knew when to take the dive. He did it at the right time. Suter. Draws the penalty in the center ice area. There's Jelinek. Suter hooked his right arm, but not hard enough to create that kind of a fall, but it worked. I suppose that's the main thing. Suter, the Madison, Wisconsin native, the Calgary Flame, is in the penalty box. The power play now for Team Czechoslovakia. Their power play in this hockey game has been anything but good. 
They have sputtered and faltered. Haven't had that many good opportunities. Of course, a lot of that because of the good penalty killing that Team USA possesses. What an opportunity for Brett Hull. He's going to interview with us at the end of the second period. Look at this. How many players do you know that can do that? Grab the puck coming laterally and behind them and get the shot away in one motion. Not many. Brett Hall can do it. Several of his 86 goals last season for the St. Louis Blues coming off shots like that. Well, he is really upset with the compensation factor involved with the Blues having signed Brendan Shanahan and Scott Stevens being awarded to the Devils. Very outspoken, Steve Simmons writing today in the Toronto Sun, quoting Hull and then back to Brent after the statements had been jotted down and said, now this is what you said, isn't it? Hull said yes and went on even further. Kevin Allen of USA Today is writing Hull's autobiography. They have five more chapters to do. They hope to have the book out in time for the Christmas trade. U.S. a man short here. Yelenek playing it back of the net. Down to the far side. Very methodical. This is an area that the Czechs have to take advantage of. They've got to get something going on their power play to have any chance in this Canada Cup tournament. And scored a power play goal coming into tonight's game. They're 0 for 3, working on their fourth chance here. Just a little too methodical. There's no nice flow that a power play should have, Jake. They, they seem to be so mechanical. They even iced the puck. Remember the last power play they had? They were offside twice on it. There's the defenseman, Leo Gudis. He's 26 years old. He's number three. Camera panning along the bench. Kushera. As he sits down, there's Ivan Holinka. He played in the 76 Canada Cup as the captain. Made it to the finals that year. Played two years, as Jiggs had mentioned, with the Vancouver Canucks, the 81-82 season, along with the 82-83. He scored 42 goals, had 81 assists, 123 points in 137 games. Had a tough practice here this morning for a game day workout, wasn't it? <laughs> Was it ever? That's developing here. The puck off Chelios off Richter as well. Four and a half minutes remaining in the second period. It's frozen on the boards, and they'll bring it outside the U.S. zone for the ensuing faceoff. Some of the games coming up in the Labatt Canada Cup. Czechs playing Canada September the 7th. That's on Saturday. Sweden and Finland. USA plays the Soviets in Chicago. That game you will see, we will be at and bringing to you right here as we speak. Only it'll be in Chicago, not here at the <laughs> Joe Louis Arena. Will we know the difference? Quite likely. <laughs> Our last report, there were still several good tickets available at Chicago Stadium to see Team USA and the Soviets on Saturday. And then, of course, Finland and Team USA finish up the round robin tournament Monday night at Chicago Stadium, and we'll have coverage of that game for you as well. Frank Lucille down the left side. Drafted originally by the Minnesota North Stars, as they were then, now only to be called the Stars this coming season. They called here. This is the 1991 Labatt Canada Cup. There are the numbers 3 1, U.S. leading, under four minutes remaining in the second period. And the teams are back at six aside after Suter's hooking penalty. And again, Team Czechoslovakia does not mount a shot on goal during that two minutes ban. JJ, Jim Johnson turns back of the net. Weinrich is his defense mate. Trouble getting the puck to him. Now Weinrich goes back of the U.S. goal, tries the left side. Held in by the Czech. Seeger's shot blocked by Weinrich. Seeger with it again. Gets bumped by Eric Weinrich. He makes it New Jersey, and the puck is loose back of the U.S. goal. With the strength here, but they can't one-hand it in front. Good effort by Robert Reichel. Here's Pat LaFontaine cutting through center ice. Drops it back to the blue line, and unable to handle it or do anything was Ronick. Watcha leading the rush. Defenseman up to join the play, but they put things offside at the U.S. blue line, and exactly three minutes remain in the second period. Interesting when you think of some of the names that are not in the lineup for Team Czechoslovakia, as you look at the bench of Team USA, there's the, the Czech team, Peter Stosny. He said he wasn't going to play because there wasn't enough Slovaks playing on the team. David Volek, uh, Yeri Herdina, Peter Klima, Edmonton Oilers. He wanted to wait until they came over here. He didn't want to show up for training camp 
in Czechoslovakia, and coach Ivan Holinka said, no, that won't work. Ruzika, Vladimir Ruzika, Robert Holick, some of the names missing from Team Czechoslovakia. Guys decided they didn't want to go to Nimburg, wherever that is in Czechoslovakia. That's where they had their training camp. Holinka said, if you're not there for the full two weeks of training before we go to Canada, you have no chance of being on the team. David Volick of the Islanders said he thought he had done his duty playing in the World Tournament last April. Team USA trying to break out of the zone. The Penguins' Joey Mullen is knocked down. And the Caps, Ivanka couldn't get it in front of the net. Eddie Olchuk playing now for the Winnipeg Jets has cleared it out. Turning in the center ice area is Jemlichka, who got knocked off his pins. Ivanka trying to screen Richter, who pokes the puck toward the corner, and Olchuk is on it. Down the boards for Joey Mullen. Mullen, the New York native, his brother Brian is on the roster, hasn't played yet. Here's Olchuk across the line, cuts to the left side, and then dumps it in. Joey Mullen centers from back of the net, couldn't get it to Janney. Jacks come up three on three, Yager leading the rush. Jeremy Yager across the line, pulls up. Pushed by Chelios over to help out is Brent Hull, and he clears the zone. Kind of a lonely feeling for Yager that time, Jiggs. He was up a three-on-three -three rush, and two of his teammates went for a change. Now, a long shot. Just wide of the net. That went off Baranek stick. We haven't seen Palfi in this second period. He played a couple of shifts in the first period. The youngster got hit this morning. He was reaching into the net at the end of practice, pulling the pucks out. One of his teammates drilled the puck, I mean blasted it, and it went right off his hand. That's why and he may have a broken bone. I'm only speculating here, but the shot that he took looks wicked. Now Miller closes in, goes back to the net. Centers one, in the goal crease, Hoshek dives on it and holds it for a faceoff. Late in the second period, this is the Levant Canada Cup. Period by Team USA, behind the net. Waiting, Kevin Miller, there's the play to the front. Hasek moves across, grabs a hold of the puck. Hull had really started the rush. A Czech goaltender who has played in five World Cups in the 88 Olympics at Calgary makes another save. That one by Brown just went wide of the net. It's centered out in front. Hasek down, rolling around in the goal mouth, but he has been able to smother the puck. Every play around the net looks dangerous. Yeah. With Hasek, he's down on all the fours. He's scruffling around down there. But in the second period, so far, he's been able to do the job. There's the shot. He stretches out. I wonder what a goalie coach would say about the way he handled that save. <laughs> he does get the job done, but it's, but it's a little awkward in its look. I'll tell you what. <laughs> we'll get Joe Bertania one of these days to maybe give us an idea of how that goes about. He's the goalie coach of Team USA, of course, with the Boston Bruin. Hoshek had been without a stick for a few moments here. And return to him. There's LaFontaine setting up Doug Brown. Holds and holds and shoots. That deflected off the defenseman Basha. Cleared around the boards and out of the zone with 28 seconds left in the second period. Kevin Hatcher back for it. Hatcher to the right side. Doug Brown backhands it out of the zone. Up ahead is LaFontaine. He is offside. He tipped the puck behind Hoshak anyway, but the whistle had already sounded. Always dangerous, Pat LaFontaine. From a standing stop to top speed, nobody is quicker. LaFontaine, one of five Michigan, well, actually uh, born in Missouri, so we'll make him not one of the five Michigan players <laughs> on this team. You mentioned uh, not in the lineup tonight, the Islanders defenseman Jeff Norton. Norton's been bothered by a shoulder had off-season surgery. Today, he went over to the University of Michigan to check in with the team doctor, the guy who had looked after him during his college career, just to make sure that it was progressing as well as he thought. He has not played a game. He did play several games prior to the tournament. Nothing thus far as the U.S. playing their third game tonight. New York Islanders, I should point out, there's three players here. Randy Wood rounds out the other player. 
has not played in the game also. There's the horn ending the second period, a rather uneventful period. Only one penalty, only one goal. Hoshak didn't have a whole lot of work. Richter was the busier of the two goaltenders that period. It was busy, Jiggs, uh, when you think it's uh, 11 shots on Richter, and it wasn't until near the end of the second period that Team USA got two or three shots at Hoshak. He ended up having to stop seven in the period. Well, coming into the game, Jim Taylor said that he felt that if the U.S. played the, the game that they were capable of, and that is taking away center ice, clogging it up, forcing everything to the outside, that that would give the Czech defense an opportunity to let the U.S. win the game. Well, <laughs> not too high praise for Team Czechoslovakia's D, but through two periods, it's a low-scoring game. The U.S. 3, Czechoslovakia 1. This is the 1991 Labatt Canada Cup. Slovakia. 3-1 to one at the end of the second period. And along with me at this time, we've got the 86 goal scorer from last season in the St. Louis Blues, Brett Hull. How you doing? Good, thanks, Ed. How are you? I'm doing wonderfully. Listen, you've had some scoring opportunities in the second period and uh, some shots on goal. A few bounced over your stick. Maybe you'd give us an impression of the first two periods so far. Well, I think it's uh, it's one of those pivotal games for both teams in the in the tournament. Uh, you know, we're one in... Uh, uh, one and so are they and it, it, it's uh, it's tough to come back when you're one and two so uh, we wanted to come out and uh, uh, get us good start and uh, the Europeans are very tough against uh, to play against when they've got the lead so we wanted to come out and get the lead and, and fortunately we did get that uh, Rhett, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, about this team Czechoslovakia uh, have they changed their style uh, from the first to the second period or overall do you think that they've changed their style over the years well I, I think so I, and not only them I think it's uh, a lot of the teams, the Russians, the Swedes, and the Finns as well, there's so many of the players that they have on their national teams that have played in the NHL now that uh, I think their coaches and their coaching staffs have almost developed a, uh, a semi-NHL style, whereas uh, they're not afraid to dump it and, and go and chase it, and they're not afraid to, uh, to, to they're always been great interferers, but to hold up the wingers on the forecheck and, and release like we do in the NHL. Maybe you could give me your impression of that Jeremy Yeager. Uh, he, he seems to handle himself pretty good for a 19-year-old. Oh, he sure does. He's a tremendously skilled player, and, uh, uh, you know, he's so young. He's still trying to, I think, develop his own little niche in the game, and uh, it, it's kind of hard to do that when you're so young, but uh, uh, I think he kind of plays the way I do. He, he, he's in there, but then all of a sudden he's not, and he's in the open, and uh, he's got the puck when you don't think he does, and uh, I think he's going to be a tremendous player throughout his career in the NHL. How much influence does playing on a team with Mario Lemieux and being of the same size, and he's often said that uh, even before he got to uh, Pittsburgh that Mario Lemieux was his idol? Well, it's got to be a tremendous thrill for a 19-year-old kid to come in and get to play with a uh, guy of Mario's stature and uh, uh, to be able to play alongside of him. And, and uh, since you idolize him so much, you can, you can emulate his style, and, and it can't do anything but help your game. I, that's uh, one thing I hope I get to do before I uh, end my career is get a chance to play with uh, Wayne or Mario or someone of that stature or, or even Eric Lindros, who's going to be a great player in his own right. Brett, so far in your career, you've remained rather silent on some issues, and now you feel uh, you've, you've out, been outspoken here on an issue. You've lost one of your teammates in Scott Stevens, and uh, you were quite firm about some of your responses to the way it was handled. Maybe you could share that with us. Well, I, I, I just think it was uh, terribly done. Uh, we. Uh, you can't take anything away from Brendan Shannon. He's a tremendous player, but uh, uh, a year ago we gave up five first-round picks and, and uh, we gave a heck of a lot of money to Scott Stevens. Uh, we got him in there and he's our team captain and, and he means the world of our team. I think he means more to our team than, uh, than Adam Oates or myself. And uh, uh, we've lost a, a tremendous player and I just think it's... Uh, uh, it's an injustice to use him as a martyr to get back at the St. Louis Blues when, when really the St. Louis Blues never did anything uh, that wasn't in their rights to develop a, a great hockey team for the fans in St. Louis uh, to try and win a Stanley Cup. And uh, it's a slap in the face to, to the St. Louis Blues. And, and in my fact, it's a, it's a slap in the face to the NHL players. You, uh, you said, uh, you were quoted as saying that if the players strike, that this could possibly be the thing that tipped the scales. Well, there's no question that, uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure how the, the negotiations are going, but uh, uh, Bobby Goodenow's got to look at this and say there's something seriously wrong with uh, uh, with the league when something like this can happen, and uh, it's just a terrible injustice, and, and I said it before, I'm embarrassed for the league, and, uh, you know, it's it, the league has come in such a long way in, in deterring violence and showcasing their great players like Gretzky and, and Lemieux and uh, young kids like Yarger and, and Madonna and uh, Roenick, and, and then they come along and do something like this, and it just it ruins the game. 
How much of uh, how much input does Brett Hull get uh, as far as the Players Association is concerned? Well, I'm I'm not really actively involved. All I, all I can tell them is that uh, I support whatever their decision is. I'm I'm a part of them. Uh, uh, I'm I'm just one small cog, and and all of our uh, uh, strength is when we stand together. And I'm behind them. Whatever they decide, uh, I know we've got uh, the best man on the job, and that's Bobby Goodenough. Let's get back to this hockey game now, Brett. Uh, what about the third period? What does Team USA have to do uh, in the third period? Well, we've got to play smart. Uh, we got to keep a third man high. We can't let them get any easy goals and get back in it. Uh, we got to we got to get it in uh, four check with two men strong and and uh, just be patient. Don't let them get back in it with uh, any bad mistakes. Do you feel that uh, enough of the players are getting enough of the action in game uh, such as this? Well, I don't think so. I think all the guys should. Uh, uh, have a chance to play uh, a lot, but we're going four lines, and and uh, it's unfortunate that some guys have to get cut, and some guys uh, are here that don't get to play, and it's unfortunate, but I'd like to see everyone get a chance to play. Brett, uh, we appreciate your being as candid as you have been. I know it's hard to do that sometimes, but it takes leadership for uh, for teams to succeed and leagues to succeed. Continued success. Thank Th you very much. Thank you very much, Ed. Brett Hall has been our guest here between the second and third periods at the Joe Lewis Arena. You're watching Labatt's Canada Cup 91. They were having a lot of problems here at the beginning of the second period. See Team USA getting in behind the defense. That's Eddie Olchuk as he moves the puck. Beautiful play by Olchuk. You can see Joel Otto standing there unprotected, popping it in at 125. Mike Madonna also helped in getting Joel Otto his first goal of the Canada Cup. We don't come much easier than this for... Team USA, another look at it. Eddie Olchuk, nice reach to recontrol the puck after it slipped away. See where Otto went. As you look at the game, you see with the breakdown of the play, uh, Team Czechoslovakia, everybody with their back in the wrong direction. Nobody turned facing the players of Team USA. Madonna started the play coming across the blue line. It was a broken play from the beginning, and they capitalized on the mistake. And as you've said so many times over the years, you only get so many chances in the course of a hockey game, and you better take advantage of most of them well, one that didn't go in thanks to a goal post and a resounding boom. Of course, we talked about the fact that Team USA had been outshot in the period. Look at this booming shot of beauty off the goal post. That coming off the stick of Kolnick. And the Kolnick led both teams, or has so far, through two periods with four shots. You can see the scramble around Team USA's net clearing a puck. Checks began to dominate play again in that second period. They're down three to one as we get ready for third period action. This is the 1991 Canada Cup. Nine minutes of play here in the second period. Remember, Canada has scored twice tonight while shorthanded. Sundin has to leave it inside the line, and it's cleared by Sutton. Graham, great checker is on the ice. Leading the four checking for Canada. Now Rundquist brings it away to the blue line with Sundin and Lindstrom. Plays it in behind. Right on the far side is Nashland in pursuit. Back on the right point. Roll it in front and McKinnis picks it up and blasts it down the ice. Both changing on the fly now. McKinnis getting it ahead to Larmer and it's over two lines just inside the Swedish blue line. There's your score from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit as we get ready for the third period. Team USA with goals from LaFontaine, Slovakian squad. Ivan Halenka sent out his forward line with Pavanka in the middle, Jelenic on the right side, and over on left wing, Richard Zemlichka. Ronick's line, Ronick with Tony Granato and Mike Madano for the U.S. Brian Leach on defense moving up the boards got checked. And checks can't get to a loose puck in the U.S. end of the ice. Madano. Trying to get away from Michael Pavanka. Madano to Ronick took the pass and escape. Neatly up ahead. And at center ice, Granado puts it deep in the check under the ice. Leo Gudis playing around the boards. It's intercepted. Team USA's Tony Granado just played it out of the reach of Mike Madano. Here's Pavanka. Crisscrossing as he hit the blue line. Jelinek moved in with him, but Team USA comes up with the puck. J.R. Jeremy Roenick. Long pass to the blue line. And Dolchuk blasts one off the glass. Madonna peels back and started in the four check. U.S. in the middle of the line change. Gary Schlager, the young defenseman, plays it around the boards. Schlager then completed the play with a good hit on Olchuk. Across the lines, and Leachka dropped it back. Quick shot off Richter. It's loose in the far corner. 
Chelios to the line, but not out. Lucille turns it over. U.S. comes to center. Olchuk. That's to the right side. Tried to get it to his teammate. That didn't work. Now the checks with a chance. Yager up the slot. Shoots. He scores! Things changing on Team USA. Yager started the play in the center ice area. 19-year-old. There he is as he grabs the puck across. Stick checking again by Team USA. Using the defenseman as a shield, he put it between the legs of Mike Ritker. And it's now 3-2 to two early in the third period. Yager grabs the puck. Beautiful wrist shot. Using the defenseman, Chris Chelios as a screen. It's now 3-2 to two early in the third period. Watching him in practice this morning, I was sitting with Brian Murray, the coach and general manager of the Detroit Red Wings, and he said, you know, a couple of years from now, he's going to be one of the best in the league. He'll be probably this season one of the top ten in the National Hockey League. And Mario gets a little older. Wayne's not playing anymore, referring to Gretzky. Look for Yager to be one of the very best. Oh, the folks in Pittsburgh watching on KBL were cheering as he scored, but groaning a little bit because the U.S. now leads only 3-2. to two. U.S. in the dark blue uniform. Lannon left the puck back of the net, gets to it. He and Kevin Hatcher teamed up on defense as Janney's line, the one with Miller and Hull, work as the forward unit. Brett Hull, long slap shot from center ice was wide of the net. Right at the end of the shift, Miller... Plays it in off the boards. Here's LaFontaine. It's pushed off the puck. The U.S. trying to work it back toward the line. Could not. And the long shot is turned aside by Hoshek as LaFontaine crowded the front of the net. And the Czechs have shot it down the ice. Here's the whistle for icing. Early in this period, the goal by Yager makes it 3-2. to 3-2. Two. Three to two. They have stopped skating, Jakes. They're starting to stick check again. They did that at the end of the first period and a lot in the second period. They continue here in the third. They've got to get out of it quickly. LaFontaine takes the draw with Dave Christian on one side, Doug Brown on the other. Team Czechoslovakia, Richard Zemlichka leading the rush. Zemlichka through center ice. Laid it up ahead, and Pavanka has shot it wide of Richter. Zemlichka gets shoved off the play. There's Doug Brown cradling it in his skates. And plays the puck for Jimmy Johnson. Johnson turns on the check forward. Zemlichka trying to center one. Dave Christian up with it. Went rink wide for Brian Leach of the New York Rangers. Leach, born in Corpus Christi, Texas, all alone in front and shot wide by Doug Brown. The Fontaine digs the puck out of the corner. Centers for Leach, shifts to the forehand, and is checked before he can dish it off. Exactly what the United States needs. They need some of their big players to take charge, and Brian Leach is one of them that can do it. Now the checks over the line, three on three. Able to hold the puck in is Thomas Jelinek, and Leachka gets bumped by Jimmy Johnson. The U.S. trying to come out on the left side with that long pass to Christian, slipped it up ahead to Ronick. Ronick trying to get through traffic, cannot. Jelinek can't get back inside the U.S. zone. The U.S. Setting up here, Chelios and Suter out on defense. The forward line is Madonna with Ronick and Granato. Suter to Ronick who shot it in. Mike Madonna plays a heavy hit on the Czech defender. Broke his stick. And his teammate, Tony Granato, can't come up with a loose puck. Yuri Schlager, son of Yuri Bubala. Remember Bubala played for the Vancouver Canucks? This is his youngster out here tonight. 15 minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the third period. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Joe Louis Arena, Team USA 3, Team Czechoslovakia 2. Identical records for these two teams in the 1991 Labatt Canada Cup. A win and a loss. They have not played common opponents, and the puck goes out of play here. The Czechs defeated the Soviet Union before losing 1-0 to, to Finland. Team USA opened up with a win over the Swedes, opened up here tonight with a 2 to nothing lead on goals by LaFontaine and Ronick before Jelinek replied late in the first period. Joel Otto with the only goal of the second period, and Yarmer Yager, a minute and a half into the third period, cutting Team USA's lead to one goal. Team USA has had only one shot on goal through the first four and a half minutes of this third period. The Czechs 
and had a couple and of course scored on one the goal by Yager Kevin Hatcher slipped it to Joey Mullen four checks back Mullen forced to dump it in it's recovered here by Lucille Lucille trying to move it up Weinrich held it in playing it around Yager Yager frees it up gets it in return twists and turns to get away from the checking of Olchek Otto on him here and Baranek plays it to the left side. Ruzinski across the line, trying to move in on Hatcher's side of the ice. Ruzinski, nice little pass. Baranek got chased to the corner and dragged down. Yager with it here. The U.S. doing what they had hoped to do, forced them to the outside. And they come up with the puck. Joel Otto knocked away and recovered by the Czechs. Ruzinski centers. Weinrich broke up the pass. Ruzinski laid the lumber across Otto, and there's a penalty call coming against the Czech team. Team USA will go to the power play. Bad time to take a penalty for the Czechs. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. A slashing penalty tried to chop the legs off of Joel Otto. Didn't try to hide it either. No. It was wide open. The referee has had his attention in that direction. That's where the puck was. Second power play of the game for Team USA. They set up with Leach and Chelios on the points. Here's Chelios with a drive. Blocked the rebound by Hall. Oh, and it just went off the goaltender, Hasek. Chelios feeds Leach. Bounces off his stick. Ends up on the near boards. Brett Hull had it. Lost it. Now Leach gets to it. Through traffic on the Hull stick. Centers it across. Big drive to score! Manato! Number seven, the defenseman for Team Czechoslovakia. A poor job of clearing the puck. Madonna whacks it in. There's Hull with his play to the front of the net. Madonna walks in and with a lot of time and a little net, he blisters a hard shot. Team USA, their fourth goal. There's Hull's backhand shot. There's a ripping hard shot by Mike Madonna. And it's four to two. Madonna has scored 28 goals for the Minnesota North Stars last season. It's the power play goal at the 550 mark of this third period. A little breathing room for Team USA. We said at the outset that this is a big game for both countries. The hopes of going to the playoffs after they round robin after they've played all the other five teams. The top four teams meet. First game is a sudden death semifinal. The two winners to go to a best of three final round for the Canada Cup 1991. Kevin Miller clearing the puck out of the U.S. zone. Jelinek recovers at center ice. His pass on and off the stick of Zemlichka. Zemlichka with it again. Trying to get around the check of Janney. Does as he turned neatly and then fed Yager. Yager. And Suter in front of him. Janney slips it up ahead. Here's Miller across the line. Brett Hull goes after it now. But Lucille is there. The Czechs trying to come up right wing. Yager, long pass. And Bleachka over on the left side. Aranek drifting in front of the net. Couldn't get the puck to him. Hatcher frees it up. Then it's stolen. And Yager puts it off the pads of Richter. Loose in front. And Bleachka is checked. There's a drive by Slager that just missed. Comes bouncing off the side of the net. Back comes Team USA. Kevin Miller down the left side. Played it in around the defense. Chasing it down is Frank Lucille. Lucille from the Calgary Flames to Yermer Yager of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yager plays it around the boards. The Czechs go for a player change as Richter tries to play it to the boards. Did, but Christian is well covered. And here's Yager with it now. Well, Lannan takes him to the boards and holds him there. The puck loose. Christian trying to fish it out of some skates. That didn't work. Yager put one out in front. Didn't have any help open. Back with it is Doug Brown. Fontaine with him on the left side. Took the pass, then gets checked. Shot in off the boards by Christian. The U.S. has to regain the blue line to get the play back on side, and they do safely. Check starting out of the zone, led by Ruzinski. Falling at center ice. Christian is over the line. Had LaFontaine with him. Couldn't get the puck to him. That was Robert Cron. First shift of the third period, I believe. Checks unable to go anywhere. Now they dump the puck in off Botch's stick. Weinrich for the exchange with Richter. Eric Weinrich to Dave Christian. 
Nice long outlet went off Bacha. Checks back into the U.S. zone once more. Weinrich takes the man. Renato went looking for a loose puck and was met immediately as Seeger was on him. Try to center it from back of the net. Here's Jimmy Johnson for the U.S. You get the feeling, Jakes, that the Czech team are trying to open the game up. U.S. isn't letting them happen. And here's another penalty to the Czechs. Jimmy Johnson dragged down as he danced across the blue line. This will be the third power play opportunity of the game for Team USA. They've been successful on the two previous. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Penalty. Jim Johnson with a nice move. Look at he splits the defense. He's in. He's going for the net. Hooked up from behind by Bucca. So Team USA getting things their own way now. Red Hull tees one up. Rattled around in front on a deflection and it's dug loose. Hull with it. Slipped it into the slot. And the Jacks are able to clear it down the ice. Brett Hull, Mike Madonna, and Jeremy Roenick, the forwards for Team USA, with Leach and Chelios on defense. Here's Chris Chelios. Madonna drifts in. Roenick to the front of the net as he came back to Leach. Round one check and then couldn't get totally around Gudas. And Team Czechoslovakia comes away as Baranek dumps it in. 35 seconds has ticked off in the penalty against the Czech defenseman. Madonna on his off wing crashes into Schlager at the blue line and Lucille shoots the puck over the glass. Mike Madonna with his head up saw Schlager coming. Schlager was lining him up. Get a look at number four, Frank Musil. Mentioned originally a Minnesota North Star, five year NHL veteran. He's traded to Calgary. There's Mike Madonna. Boy, can he dance. You know, he's a better skater than I thought. Of course, with the way the scheduling is, we don't get to see Mike Madonna and his Minnesota North Stars play that often. But Livonia, Michigan native. He was a first pick, first overall in 88, and he was only the second American ever drafted first overall. The first, of course, Brian Lawton back in 1983. Madonna, just 21 years of age now. What a talent. Joel Otto lines up in the faceoff. Team USA with the mad advantage. Puck comes back toward the blue line. Kevin Hatcher. Gary Suter sets up Olchuk and he couldn't get a shot off. Schlager and Lucille and Lucille ends up putting the puck out of play again. One minute, one second left in Botch's penalty. Team USA leading by a score of four to two. There's Ivan Holenka. Better look at him there. Good looking coach of the Czech team. A fine skater in his day. A great playmaker as we talked about the numbers he put up. He's still got the same skates that he used yeah. the last time he played in the NHL back in 1983. Feeling some pressure here though Ed. 10 minutes and 20 seconds left in this game as team down 4-2. He's they trying. outshot Finland the other day, 36 to 19, and lost the game one to nothing. The Soviets outshot the Czechs 39 to 24. Yet the Czechs win that one five to two. You figure it out. <laughs> He's trying to take, which has been a very dull Czech team over the last few years, the international team, and make it into something exciting again. Remember Milan Novi? Oh yeah. Now here's Yager. Can't pull the puck around Suter. Evan Hatcher works it up ahead. This is Joel Otto coming in off the left side. Otto trying to turn on Schlager. And the puck ends up all the way back in the U.S. end of the ice. 25 seconds left in this U.S. power play. Two for two, working on the third opportunity. Offside pass across those two lines. Gary Suter. A playmaker, deluxe of the Calgary Flames. As I mentioned before, the Madison, Wisconsin native. Played for Bob Johnson. Back at the University of Wisconsin. He told me last Friday morning after Bob Johnson had undergone surgery that if he had his way, he would just pack his bags and go home. He was devastated, as we all were with the news almost a week ago. Bob Johnson had been found to have a brain tumor. Surgery took place a week ago tonight. And if you missed the report earlier, the Badger had a couple of sessions of therapy today. One physiotherapy and the other speech therapy. And his team leads tonight by a score of four to two. And the capable hands of Tim Taylor. 
Teams are at six aside again. Weinrich looked one in from the blue line. The checks come up three on two, but can't get through center ice cleanly. Now they're into the U.S. zone and can't split the defense. Good job by Willannon and Weinrich as they knock Seeger down. Here's Weinrich once more. Shot it in wide. Oshak will play it around the boards. The U.S. pinched in but couldn't trap the puck. And Seeger leaves it for his defenseman. Chera at the line, shot it wide of Richter. Taken by Brett Hull. Hull, cross ice pass, but behind his teammates. The Czechs get to it. Pavanka trying to center one. That's tipped outside the line. Gudas to the left side, and it's shot in by Bacha. And play called the delayed offside. U.S. leads 4 to 2. This is the 1991 Labatt Canada Cup. Here, too. Speaking moments ago of Milan Novi. He leads all current Czech players in international competition. Actually, in Canada Cup competition, I should specify. He has 11 points in 13 games. 76 to 87 Canada Cups. You know that Mark Johnson is the leading scorer for the U.S.? Yeah, got some research there. There's Kevin Miller. The puck goes off him and play called. Take it one step further. Coaches in this game tonight in games against each other. Czechoslovakia against Team USA. Mike Eves, assistant coach of Team USA, leads in the games, the four games that they played against each other over the Canada Cups. There he is with the mustache and his headset on. The dapper, always dapper Mike Eves. He's got two goals and two assists, four points, four games. And Ivan Halinka. There he is, the coach of Team Czechoslovakia. Leads the Czech team in games against Team USA. Another member of the U.S. coaching staff on the bench tonight is Jay Leach. Jay had been an assistant with the Hartford Whalers. He'll go to their American Hockey League team at Springfield as the head coach. His first head coaching job this coming season. Mike Eames, by the way, coaches the Philadelphia Flyers American Hockey League team at Hershey, Pennsylvania. The Czechs move in here with an opportunity set up and a bad pass. And back comes Mike Madano. Madano's goal has given the U.S. a 4-2 lead. And then only five shots on goal registered in this period. Three by the U.S., two by the Czechs. Czechoslovakia trying to get something set up here inside that U.S. zone, and it doesn't work. Zemlichka handling the puck. Fires one from the point, high and wide. Madano handles it now. The Czech team, Jiggs, I suppose you would have to admit that in the average age, they're much younger than Team USA, and yet it appears that the Czechs are running out of steam. They've had a much shorter bench, although a pretty good shot there from close in. Too many men on the ice, I would think. Seems to be a lot of bodies. No, it's a roughing penalty call. Yeah, another penalty indicated by referee Bill McCreary. This is the 91 Labatt Canada Cup. No, not to the captain, Joel Otto. Jeremy Roenick is in the box, a roughing penalty. So any chance that Team Czechoslovakia has has to come off a power play where they have been unsuccessful in the game so far. Yeah, they just haven't mounted much of an attack. Jager out with Ruzinski. And Zemlichka, the puck frozen on the boards. It was in Chelios skates. I mentioned the age factor. Team USA averages 26 years. And the Czechs average 23.4 years in their lineups tonight. Ivan Halenka with some instructions to the guys waiting for the next shift on the power play. There he is, a little, a little pep talk. And down at the American bench, they're getting a breather. Team USA will practice here in Detroit tomorrow before moving on to Chicago for their next two games. Saturday against the Soviet Union, Monday against Finland. Be on hand with coverage of those games for the 91 the Bat Canada Cup. Reminder. Always so much more fun to practice, excuse me, Jigs, to do a practice after you've won a hockey game. That's not conceding this game by any means to Team USA, but they do have it in pretty good shape right now. They've played two periods at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, and Team Canada continues with a 3 0 lead over Sweden. And an injured Czechoslovakian player down on the ice. Is that Jager? 
gets up very slowly. He got cranked. He got cranked, I think, with a cross check. He's reaching toward his face. These two teams met in Saskatoon in a pre tournament game. It got nasty. And here tonight, Yager, you can see, is bleeding. Takes a look around. There's Yager trying to handle. Look at this Ooh. right in the face. Wow. Suter lays a heavy lick with a cross check into the face of Yager. No penalty as of right now, but we'll have to wait and see the linesman, whether they talk to the referee. He's consulting with a couple of different players, but young Jeremy Yager, who's had a wonderful hockey game for his Czech team, takes a vicious cross check in the face from Suter. Let's take another look. Yager was leaning forward. He was trying to handle a bouncing puck around the net just to the right of Richter. There he is. There's Suter. Look at that. That's vicious. That's the kind of thing that Brett Hall was saying that they're trying to get out of the NHL. Maybe you ought to talk to one of his teammates. It was in the game you were talking about in Saskatoon when these two teams played the final exhibition game preparing for the Canada Cup. Apparently Chris Chelios mad at Thomas Jelinek. Jelinek had carved into the face of a couple of the Team USA guys and Chelios leveled him with what I understand was something of the same nature that kind of a check and they lined up the teeth of Jelinek on the top of the boards. Mm. There were several. Hasn't been too nasty tonight. There have been a couple of occasions in the most recent there in Suter and no penalty. There is still a minute and 12 seconds left in a check power play. Ronick sitting on a roughing penalty. Puck comes back to the left point for Gudas. He got checked and a diving. Doug Brown was able to clear the zone. Robert Reichel slams it back in again. Brown waits over on right wing, golfed at it. Got it to the line and no further. Robert Crone. Plays it back into the corner. Now Reichel sets up here in the right wing corner to the blue line. Back to Reichel. Reichel looked at Gudis, elected to shoot one. It was blocked and now goes wide. Brown and Bacha after it. And the U.S. is able to clear it out of the zone. Five and a half minutes to go in the third period. Team USA four. Team Czechoslovakia two. The U.S. trying to win for the second time in the Canada Cup tournament. Said at the outset they've had success over the years against Team Czechoslovakia with a record of two wins, a loss, and a tie, and outscoring the Czechs 14 to 11, the various U.S. teams. They beat them 6 to 2 and 3 to 2. Two wins that they lost. They lost 3 to 1. Well, that was the 1987 Canada Cup in a game at Sydney, Nova Scotia. The very first Canada Cup in 76. The game ended in a 4 4 draw. There is no overtime, remember, in tournament play. During the round robin, I should point out. Now less than five minutes to go, and the teams are at six aside again. And a bad pass by Jelinek. Stolen here, Ronick to Granado off the heel of his stick and just wide. After the round robin tournament, they played everybody one time. The top four teams go to the playoffs, and it's a straight knockout in the next round, the semifinal. The two winners advance to a best of three from the Labatt Canada Cup. Leach has played it around the boards, picks it up himself. Up ahead is Ronick. There's the pass. Out comes Hasek. Ronick a drive. Missed the net. Hasek may have gotten a chunk of it. See Hasek back into the goal to cover the puck that's on the outside of the mesh, Ed. Ronick shot it so hard it's hard to tell. It might have gone right through Hasek, the goaltender. What a free shot Ronick had. He blistered it. I believe wide. Here's a look at it. There's Ronick. Drops his head down. Then the head comes up. There's the shot. See the left arm of Hasek move. He may have gotten a piece of it. Bit of an altercation. Tony Granato having some words. There's Jeremy Ronick, the Boston native. Chicago first pick at 88. 94 points last year. There's the update on today's game. USSR, some, I guess they, you could say that the alarm went off for them. They won their first game, beating Finland 6-1. to one. And in the third period, Canada leading Sweden 3-0, that game at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. You were mentioning Tony Granato. There's been a little pushing, shoving, nothing too serious. There's only been one fight in the history of the Canada Cup. 
That was in the Labatt Canada Cup 1984. Helmut Steiger playing for West Germany. That's when the Finns didn't uh, send a team over. And Milo Horsheva playing for the Czechoslovakians. They were thrown out by referee Ron Wicks. 15 minutes and penalties to each player. And that is a Canada Cup record. Most penalties in a game are penalty minutes. And there's your summary of tonight's action. Just over four minutes remaining. Team USA up four to two as Kevin Miller centered one. Taken by Musil, plays it up the left wing boards and out towards center ice. Chelios has it. Couldn't get it back inside the zone. And down the left side goes Bacha. Sets up Yager, and that is off Richter and ends up in the seats. So Yager again draws a crowd here. I would have thought that if a check was going to go after anybody, it would have been after Gary Suter. After the cross check into the face of Yager. That's Chelios having some words with Yager. You can see the fat lip, the blood on his jersey. Three minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the third period. There's the bench. Jeremy Roenick, back of his helmet, number 17. Tony Granato talking with teammate Joey Mullen, number seven. You can tell that by their helmets. Of course, Ivan Holinka trying to do something to get his team some scoring opportunities. What kind of combination of defensemen and forwards? They don't change them that often. Czech team, like many of the European teams, they use five men. Each time they change the same five, two defensemen, three forwards. Czech still have Canada and Sweden on their schedule in this preliminary round. They play Canada at Montreal on Saturday and then Sweden in Toronto next Monday. I told you Team USA goes to Chicago for games against the USSR and Finland. Saturday, Soviets, Monday, the Finns. Team Czechoslovakia trying to move the puck in deep. It's back of the U.S. goal. Yager took a look at Miller, who was coming in, and now Brett Hull frees it up. Adam moves it around the boards. And Janney can't dig it out of some skates. And again, it goes back to the U.S. goal. Yager in for checking. And exactly three minutes remaining. And a hit here. Referee Bill McCreary with the signal for an elbowing penalty as Yager pushed at Miller. McCreary surveying the situation as he goes to the penalty timekeeper's bench with the signal for elbowing on Miller. Kevin Miller takes a run at Yager, gets the elbow up. Of course, I suppose that's a defensive action as he charged at him because Miller, not that tall, trying to make something happen against Yager, who is in the six foot three range. Here they into the board. There's Yager as he turns. Here comes Miller. There, you see the elbow come up. Interesting that he gets a two minute penalty for that bit of emotion and Gary Suter gets nothing for cross-checking Yager across the lower lip. Now team Czechoslovakia with one more power play chance. This will be their sixth opportunity of this game. Still looking for their first power play goal in the Labatt Canada Cup 1991. Vodka comes out, so does Jelinek, so does Seeger. They have Gudis on one side of the defense, Musil on the other. I wonder if Hasek will head for the bench, Jiggs. He seems to be so far out. Maybe it's just a place he likes to watch the game from. He's standing out at the hash marks. Gudis need one up. Locking glove saved by the goaltender. Hasek backed in toward the goal mouth. Now comes out to play the puck. Off the boards it goes. And right to Brian Leach, who's dumped it in. U.S. plugs the zone with Otto starting in. The Czechs come up with a loose puck and on this power play move through the center ice zone and on into the U.S. territory. And again, we welcome our CTV audience to the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Team USA leads Czechoslovakia by a score of 4-2. to two. The Czechs with a power play. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the third period. Czechoslovakia in the white uniforms, having difficulty moving out of their own end of the ice. Gudis got to the line where Dave Christian checked him. All the little things breaking down for Team Czechoslovakia. The power play has not worked. You see little passes now that were working before, as you just saw there in the skates, as Dougie Brown grabs it. 
lifts it down the ice. Yeah, that first pass has to be good. Way Team USA is checked. They're not going to get through center ice. Now they elect to carry it. Robert Reichel is across the line. Parks here on the right wing boards and plays it in deeper, but Chris Chelios gets to it. Turned it over. Reichel centers. There's Jogger with a shot. Stretching. Saved by Mike Richter. Gary Suter of the Calgary Flames after it. Got it to Christian, but not out of the zone. And again, Richter has to be alert. As the Czechs held it in momentarily, and now Joel Otto shoots it down the ice. Madonna has scored for Team USA in this third period after Jogger had gotten the Czechs to a one-goal deficit. Madonna's a power play goal, making it 4-2, and we just have one minute and ten seconds remaining in the third period of this game. Up ice with it is Jerry Schlager. Vancouver Canuck draft choice of last season. Got one in front. Jimmy Johnson will clear that out. And the Czechs trying to move out of the zone. Less than a minute to go. Team USA up four to two. And about to take a two win, one loss record out of Detroit. And will drop the Czech record to a win and two losses. Donato with a feed. Onto the stick of Mike Madonna. Donato's had a strong game again tonight. Gave it to Granato, backhanded it in, but offside at the blue line. Games at full strength again after Miller's penalty and is, is expired. A lot of heads hanging a little low along the Czech bench. They're looking up at the clock, 33 seconds remaining. Tim Taylor will begin his 16th consecutive season as the head coach at Yale University. Pat some backs. Good effort by his squad tonight. A couple of times they seem to drift into deep slumber, it appeared. Well, they stopped skating, Jake. So whenever a team stopped skating, they stopped checking. They started to do some of that hook checking and trying to slow down the checks with their sticks. That allowed Czechoslovakia to get back in, but recovered from that well enough. Most of it's been sloppy play by the Czech team. I'm a little surprised. They've had some good individual efforts, but team-wise, they just have not played that well. Have not passed well. Here's Thomas Jelinek with a pass. Found its way to Gudas. They can't get through center ice. On to Granado to Jeremy Roenick. Couldn't get it back to Granado in time. New center ice is Michael Pavanka of the Washington Capitals to the left side. Uh oh. Jelinek with, was out of stick. He got an elbow to the kisser. And now a team meeting has been called. Tony Granado from Team USA involved in the middle of it. Two seconds is all that remains in the hockey game. You hate to see this kind of stuff happen. Somebody pulling the helmet and the face shield off Gudas, number three. There's some undercurrents in the hockey game. There's been some stick work. Some slaps along the hands and wrists and chops at the legs. Remember they back early in the hockey game. So let's take a look at that last play. There, knocking the stick out of his hand. There's Granado as he goes after Jelinek. He seems to be a favorite target. I had mentioned about how Chelios had knocked some of his teeth out in Saskatoon in an exhibition game. But it'll be a happy group of Team USA players as this game is over. Talking to them this morning and again before the hockey game, they were very nervous about playing the Czech team. They knew the significance, both teams having the same number of points, same record, win and a loss. Team USA had scored nine goals in its first two games, but it allowed nine. Knight on the verge of a 4-2 win. Jelinek will get a penalty along with Granado. Brent Hull who set up Mike Madonna's goal. Hull has had a couple of assists in this game. Don't forget our Labatt Player of the Game award coming up. As this game comes to a close with a 4-2 win for Team USA. Mike Richter being congratulated by his teammates. Tim Taylor has seen his team's record go to two wins and a loss.
the Labatt Canada Cup 91. T number 34 going out to congratulate his teammate, his teammate on Team USA and also teammate on the New York Rangers. That was John Van Beesbrook, native of this area, Detroit. Has turned 28 yesterday, didn't Beezer? Baby face. We talk about Yager and that Pittsburgh team and Team Czechoslovakia as, as well. There's another baby face, Mike Richter. 25 Andy years old. Alongside big Joel Lotto, Chris Chelios. They line up at their respective blue lines for the presentation of the Levant player of the game. And here it is. Presenting the awards are Joe Keitel for Cannon, Ron Camp of Labatt, USA. The Labatt player of the game for Team Czechoslovakia will receive a Canon Fortura camera. Number 25, Thomas Jelinek. Jelinek, 29 years of age, never drafted by an NHL team. The Labatt player of the game for Team USA, who receives an Inuit carving courtesy of Canadian Tire. Number nine, Mike Fodano. That's a pretty good choice in Mike Madano. He skated so well. He covered a lot of ice, did his job offensively, and probably doesn't get a lot of recognition for what he does defensively, but he did it both in this hockey game. Set up the game-winning goal, as it turns out, and then scored the insurance goal on the power play in the third period. So the final score is Team USA 4, Team Czechoslovakia 2. This is the 1991 Labatt Canada Cup. Four, Czechoslovakia 2. And the USA record now, two wins and a loss. Strong effort, Mike McDonald selected as our the bat uh, player of the game for Team USA, a local kid, really came back and uh, had this crowd excited. He, he dances, as you say, on those skates, and he scored a, a great goal in the third period as the insurance goal. Yes, it was an important goal because Yager had just scored prior to that, Jiggs, and things were happening in a positive manner for the Czechoslovakians. You see Hull, as he moved the puck, Czech defenseman couldn't control it, and he blistered it. Boy, did he put something on it. And Mike Madano giving the... Uh, Team USA a little distance in there, and again they could uh, they could do something different. Having a one goal lead, it's a lot different hockey game than having a two goal lead in the third period. But some pretty good individual efforts, as I pointed out, for the Czech team. Uh, the same with the U.S. team. I don't think that the Team USA had to play as well as they could have. Here's the way the night went. Pat Lafontaine got the game started for the USA with assist from Christian and Brown just before the four-minute mark of the opening period. Jeremy Ronick scored a power play goal, his third in this Canada Cup 91. Leach and Hull assisted seven minutes and 53 seconds into the period. So the U.S. safely in front two to nothing until Jelinek scored unassisted at 15.37. It's two to one USA at the end of one. In the second period, the only goal early. Joel Otto from Olchuk and Madonna. And the USA was leading by a score of three to one going to the third period. Then Yager scores his first of this tournament from Bernick. A minute and 30 seconds into the period. Madonna comes back and that goal that you just saw, a power play goal. Madonna set up by Brett Hull at the 550 mark. So the U.S. gets two power play goals tonight on the way to a four to two win. They were outshot by a margin of four, 25 shots by the Czechs, 21 by the U.S. And now our up-to-date standings, the U.S. has moved to the top for the time being, pending, of course, the outcome of the Canada game against Sweden. But the U.S. with four points, Canada and Finland with three each. Then it's uh, Sweden with a record of one and one. The Czechs dropped to one and two, and the Soviets won for the first time today. So Sweden, Czechoslovakia, and the Soviet Union all with two points each. Finland and Canada tied. And again, I remind you, Canada has a three to nothing lead over Sweden. And our final score tonight was the United States four, the Czechoslovakia team two. This is the 1991 Labatt Canada Cup. The 1991 Labatt Canada Cup has been brought to you by Labatt's Blue. Now you're laughing. For Ed Westfall, I'm Jake McDonald saying good night from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit.